Hello all. In today's lecture, we will be looking at one of the major types of land degradation that is deforestation. Now, like the name says deforestation, it essentially means the removal of forests or clearance of the forest land to convert that forest land into a non-forest purpose. For example, it could be converted into a farmland or it could be converted into a ranch or it could be converted into an urban settlement or conversion of the forest products into a commercial purpose. For example, using the wood from there, from the timber from there for a commercial product. This is what we call as deforestation. Now, this is not a problem which is new. It has been done continuously from the time man started settlements. Forests have been cleared for making new settlements. But the problem has been on the rise. It has been extremely marked in the, in the current years. And so much so that it has been estimated that around 15 million to 18 million hectares of forest land. This is the size of Bangladesh. So, so much of forest land has been destroyed every year. And in India, maximum rate of deforestation has been seen in the states of Assam, Mizoram, Nagaland and Arunachal Pradesh. But there are a few reasons for deforestation and these are the ones listed out over here. The first reason or one of the major reasons for deforestation is shift cultivation or shifting cultivation or zoom cultivation also known as slash and burn cultivation. Now, this is seen mainly in the northeastern states of India and in the tribal areas. But across the world, it has been a prevalent form of uh, cultivation in Africa, in uh, tropical American regions. And this is a type of cultivation wherein a particular farmer will clear the forest land and allow the burnt forest land to be in the soil. So, the burnt debris is actually going to provide a lot of nutrients for the upcoming crop. The, once the forest land has been completely burnt down, a part of the forest land has been burnt down, cultivation is practiced over there for two to three years until the land starts to lose its fertility. So the person will move from that part of the land, go to a new forest land, cut down the land, slash and burn the land, start the cultivation over there for two to three years, again shift from there to another site and this keeps rot keep rotating the sites until the first land which was cut down regains back its fertility. So for that fallow land to regain back its fertility, it takes around 15 years. So after 15 years, the farmer comes back to the first land and then continues with the cropping cycle. So this entire cycle where the farmer cuts down the land, uses it for farming till it becomes fallow and then regains back the fertility and comes back to a farming land is called as one June cycle. So this one complete June cycle takes roughly around 15 to 18 years. In between that time, the farmer would have cut down several different forest areas for his cultivation purpose. So that is the reason this is a major contributor of deforestation because several different parts of the forest are being cut down and the time required for them to get back their fertility is quite long. We don't have that much time. We don't have that much of forest area in our current scenario where the population is high and the demand is more. So this is the reason or this is one of the major contributors for deforestation. This type of cultivation or also called as the shifting cultivation. The second reason for deforestation leading reason for deforestation is the expansion of agriculture so due to the current demand due to the expanding population due to the strain on the land resources there is not enough land resource that we have due to this even areas which were originally having a lot of forest land for example a hill slope have been converted into farming areas have been converted into agricultural land so that expansion of agriculture is another reason for deforestation one more attributor for deforestation is the timber harvesting. There is extensive timber harvesting that is being done for construction purposes. So timber is being harvested, firewood is being collected on a large scale that is adding to deforestation. We also have cattle ranching contributing to deforestation especially in South uh, America and in Central American countries. The cattle ranching is wherein a large farm is created for breeding cattle. So you can see here, this is again a picture that has been taken from the Brazilian rainforest, which has been removed to house cattle or to raise cattle. So cattle ranching is a major problem in certain areas or certain countries where forest is being cut down to grow cattle, to grow animals. 
Lastly, there are several raw materials which are required from the forest which are being used in industrial use. So this again contributes to cutting down of the forests on a very large scale. These are the reasons for deforestation. But what impact does it have? The first impact is that when we cut down the forest, we are exposing the forest to or we are exposing the soil to erosion. So soil erosion is very, very common in deforested areas. And ultimately, over a period of time, the soil loses its fertility. So that is one of the major impacts of deforestation. Now, when there are no forests, when there are no trees, the water cycle gets impacted and when water cycle is impacted it leads to less precipitation it leads to lowering of the water table in the groundwater and ultimately that leads to climate change the loss of forest leads to diversity biodiversity loss as well there is no place for the animals for the birds for the insects so slowly the, that region's biodiversity also gets impacted and finally over a long period of time, when we do deforestation, it ultimately leads to desertification of that particular area. You can watch the impacts, the causes, the effects of deforestation, de desertification in this particular video. Now, these are two movements which have greatly resisted deforestation in India. One of them is Chipko movement and the other one is Apiko movement. So, Chipko movement was initially... It was started in Uttaranchal. At that time, it was Uttar Pradesh in the year 1973. So, in 1973, in the village of Gopeshwar in Uttaranchal, we had this movement which was started by an environmentalist that is Chandi Prasad Bhatt. What happened in this movement was, there was a company that had been given the contract to cut down the ash trees for their sports goods. It was a sports goods company in Allahabad. So, they had been given the contract. And when the people from there, from when the loggers came to cut down the trees, there was a lot of sloganeering by the villagers. It was led by Chandi Prasad Bhatt. And those people, that was the first confrontation which was there and they were sent back. A lot of, you know, people started shouting slogans, beating drums. They resisted the contractors from completely cutting down the trees. So the people were sent back and this confrontation kept happening on several occasions. There were people who were coming to cut down the trees and the, the, the community that is led by Chandi Prasad Bhatt start, resorted to tree hugging. Tree hugging is what in Hindi is called as Chipko. That is why this movement is called as Chipko movement. So a lot of work was done. It was They protested against the trees being cut down. And this was mainly with respect to an economic purpose because these trees were the source of livelihood for those villagers and they did not want their... The, their resources to be taken away by some external company. So this struggle kept going on but the main highlight of the Chipko came in when women entered into this protest. So what happened was in 1974 when the people came to cut down the trees in the village of Rainy, the men of the village were away. They had gone for uh, talking about this reason they were they had gone to talk about the same cutting down of the trees with the government officials and they were away so it came upon the women of the village to protect their trees so led by gora devi there were around 27 village women who came to the site they confronted the loggers the people who had cut, come to cut down the trees and when they were unable to you know when the talks failed when they were unable to convince the loggers they started hugging the trees they started they resorted to hugging the trees and stopped them from cutting down the trees so this is where the chipko movement actually came into the highlight because it became a women's movement it was the women of the village who guarded the trees against the cutters in fact they guarded the trees all night so they had an all night vigil and eventually this started off as a movement in that entire region so it was gora devi who was the head of the mahila mangal dal who brought in the women as a forefront of this movement. So this movement spread in that entire region between the local community and the timber merchants, but it gained international recognition and it converted from an economic struggle for their resources to a fight for forest conservation when we had Sundarlal Bahuguna enter in against the cutting down of Teri Ghadwal region uh, 
forests. So in that region, a dam was going to be built and there was a lot of deforestation that needed to be done even for, a, uh, you know, cutting down of the trees for the timber. So it was Sundarlal Bahuguna who took a march. He involved a lot of villagers from that region and it became a huge fight for conservation. It became a huge forest conservation movement in 1977. That is when the world looked up, you know, the world started uh, realizing that you can have protection of the forest, you can have a lot of uh, 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 forest conservation, you can do something for the environment by a non-violent measure as well. So this entire Chipko movement starting from Chandi Prasad Bhatt to the involvement of Gora Devi to making it into a forest conservation movement by Sundarlal Bahugna in 1977, all of this had the main the main thread of thought over here was that it was a non-violent movement. People were hugging the trees. That is why it is called as Chipko movement. And that is how they were able to send away the people who were cutting, who had come to cut down the trees or the timber merchants. The second main highlight of the movement was that it was largely a women's movement. So these were the two reasons why, or these were the two highlights of this Chipko movement that was seen in Uttaranchal in the 1970s. A similar movement that was done in the southern state of Karnataka was the Apiko movement. Now, Apiko is again uh, means to hug in Kannada. So, Apiko movement was seen in the Kalse forests in Uttara Kannada district and the reason for this was because in 1980, by 1980, the forest cover in Uttara Kannada had reduced from 80% to 25%. Just in a matter of, in a span of 30 years, the forest cover had come down extremely, excessively. So, it was, this movement was inspired by Chipko movement by, and it was led by Panduranga Hegde. He, in the year, from the time period of 1983 to 1990, he made sure he brought in a lot of women, he brought in the tribal groups of that area, he got them involved and it was again a non-violent movement exactly like our Chipko movement. So here again, the government had to ban the felling of the green trees. They wanted to fell the trees for development but due to the movement, they were they took the decision of banning the felling of green trees in that particular area in the forests of Uttara Kannada. So this was about two of the important movements that happened in India which were against deforestation and which were successful and this video also spoke about the causes and the impacts of deforestation. The only control for deforestation is afforestation. The only way you can beat the effects of deforestation is by planting more trees that is afforestation. So I hope this video was useful. See you all in the next video lecture. Thank you.